I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on rational functions. Now we'll try to understand rate of change. In this particular video, I'll solve the three questions mentioned here. These are based on average and instantaneous rate of change. You can always pause the video, copy these questions, work them out. We'll first try to understand the concepts and then solve these questions. Now the topics which I'm going to cover will basically be what is average rate of change? What is instantaneous rate of change? When is instantaneous rate of change not defined? What is the meaning of zero instantaneous rate of change? We'll talk about two methods to estimate instantaneous rate of change. These are squeezing centered interval and difference quotient method. And then we'll take up those three examples which I had shown. Now to give you the concept, average rate of change we find when we are given two different points, right? So let's make a small sketch here. Uh, let us say the function is kind of uh, like this, let's say, let's say like this, right? So on this function, if I have to find instantaneous rate of change, then we have an interval. We say, let the value of x be between a and b. Right? So let's say this is the value at a, this is the value at b. Right. So, so what we do here is that we draw a secant line between the two points a and b. So their corresponding values for the given function will be f a and this will be f b. So the instantaneous rate of change is equal to basically slope of the secant which you can find by the difference f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a right so that is instant uh, sorry average rate of change right average rate of change so basically as you can see here it is slope of secant line now when you are trying to find instantaneous rate of change in that case, we bring the points together, right? So, so let us say we are looking at some point here. We bring these two points very, very close. So, so the secant becomes almost the tangent. You get an idea, right? So that becomes the instantaneous rate of change. So the whole idea here is that bring these two points close enough so that the distance between them, this delta x, is very small, right? So instantaneous rate of change is basically slope of secant, but where the points are very, very close. So that means we are talking about a point which is only delta x away from a. So we can say f a plus delta x minus f of a over so the difference a plus delta x minus a will be just delta x right so you could rewrite this as f of a plus delta x minus f of a over delta x where delta x is very very small as compared to 1 in calculus we use the term for the same thing we say when we say let me rewrite in a different ink so in calculus we use the term limit we say limit of this delta x is approaching zero that's the whole idea right so that literally means that delta x is very very small 
Now for our calculations, we'll take delta x as 0 0.001, right? So uh, that will give us fairly accurate answer. Okay, so I hope that summarizes most of the things. Now here is one more question which says, when is instantaneous rate of change not defined? Now, wherever there is a discontinuity, it is not defined, right? That is one part. Second, there could be a cusp or a corner. It is not defined. Uh, to give you an example, okay, let me sketch uh, different graphs here. Uh, just to give you an example, for example, if I have a function whose vertical asymptote is right here, for example, right? Let's say the function is kind of like this. In that case, this function is not defined at, let's say, value A. So at this point, you cannot find instantaneous rate of change. If suppose we have a hole here, right? In that case, this is also a discontinuity. You cannot find instantaneous rate of change at that point. Okay. Now, another question is, what is meaning of zero instantaneous rate of change? Now, there are times when the slope is one at a point, right? So, to give you an, another example for this, let me sketch here. If you consider path of a ball, projectile motion, for example, you will notice that the slope at the top is zero, right? So that means horizontal. Horizontal line is tangent. So that's what that means. Meaning of zero instantaneous rate of change is that the tangent line is horizontal, correct? Now, let's take up our example and use these methods to find instantaneous rate of change. And we'll use this formula to find average rate of change between any two points. So I'll share with you some test questions so that they help you in getting good marks also. The question here is, based on average rate of change, the temperature T in degrees Celsius varies with the distance D in kilometers above Earth's surface according to the equation T of D equals to 60 divided by D plus 2. Determine the average rate of change in the temperature with respect to distance between 3 kilometers and 8 kilometers, right? So, so what we can do here is we can find the temperature at 3 kilometers, we can calculate the temperature at 8 kilometers and then average rate of change. Substituting 3 here, we get 60 divided by 3 plus 2 which is 5 and 60 divided by 5 is 12 and then we could do temperature at 8 will be 60 divided by 8 plus 2, which is 10, that gives you 6, right? So we can write that the average rate of change is equal to temperature with D depth of 8 minus temperature with 3 over 8 minus 3, correct? So that is the average rate of change. The values here are 6 minus 12 over 8 minus 3 is 5. So 6 minus 12 gives you minus 6 over 5. So it is falling. Correct? And you can always write the units. It will always have units, right? Degrees Celsius per kilometers. So you could say this is like uh, minus 1 point. Uh, 10 will be 2 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So that means falling temperature. So clearly, the negative value means it is like falling, right? So if you sketch this graph, this graph will be, okay, let's sketch it. Uh, I'll just make a rough sketch here. 
if d is 0, then it will be as 30, right? 60 divided by 2. So, let me sketch like this kind of, okay. Uh, so, it is falling, as you can see. And slope at any point over this will be negative. Do you see that part? So, that is negative. So, in our case, we found between two points, so it's a secant line. So, it is kind of a line like this, which has gone through two points. So, that is the average rate of change, correct? Which is minus 1.2 degree Celsius per kilometer. Perfect. The initial point here will be at d equals to 0, which will be 30. Okay. What do you notice in this particular case? Negative means the temperature is falling, correct? So that means negative indicates the temperature is decreasing. Correct? Now, let's take a part two of this question and try to understand how to find instantaneous rate of change at, let's say, three kilometers. So now we'll find instantaneous rate of change for the same question. The temperature T in degrees Celsius varies with distance D in kilometers above Earth's surface according to the equation T of D equals to 60 over D plus 2. Determine rate of change of the temperature with respect to distance at 3 kilometers. So when we have only one point, 3 kilometers in this case, it means instantaneous rate of change. So that's the short form we are using, right? Now we could use two methods to find this. One of them is called squeezing method, right? So we could actually squeeze using the center value. So in that case, what we will do here is that we will consider two points which are very close. So one we could say distance equals to 3 plus 0, 1. Let's say we call this as distance 2 and distance 1 we will call, uh, we'll take as 2.99, right? So we could take two particular distances, right? and then find average rate of change. So basically instantaneous is when the gap is decreased. So in this case gap is 0 0.02, right? So let's find the value. So basically uh, what we need to calculate is uh, this D has been changed to D equals to let's say 3.01. In that case substitute 3.01 because 60 over 3.01 plus 2 which is 60 over 5.01, correct? And then we'll calculate the temperature. We could also write like this, 2.99. So both are same good conventions to use. In different parts, different conventions are used. So, so what we get here is 2 plus 2, we get 4.99. Right? Let's use calculator to find these values. So we have 60 divided by 5.01 is equal to, in decimals, 11.976, uh, 976, okay. And this is 60 divided by 4.99, which is, in decimals, 12.024. So now, instantaneous rate of change will be difference of these two, right? So, we're basically saying temperature when the depth is 3.01 minus temperature when the depth is 2.99 divided by 3.01 minus 2.99, correct? So, so what we get here is 11.976 take away 12.024 divided by 0 0.02, right? So let's calculate. <clears throat> it's negative, of course. 11.976 take away 12.024 
and we'll divide this by 0 0.02. Uh, we get minus 12 by 5 in decimals minus 2.4 so we get this equals to minus 2.4 right units temperatures in degrees Celsius and the distance in kilometers you get an idea right so like this we could actually find the estimated value of instantaneous rate of change now, the other method which we talk about is difference quotient. Now, it is actually the method which is very similar to what we did, except for we take a general term first. Uh, what we do here is that we don't take a numerical value as we took 0 0.01 we say temperature we want to find between any close to three right so three plus h units away or delta x we could have written minus t of three divided by h where we know h is very very small as compared to one so that is instantaneous rate of change that's it so in our case uh, this becomes 60 over replacing D with 3 plus H we get 3 plus H plus 2 right minus 60 over 3 plus 2 and everything divided by so we'll write equal to let me write 1 over H instead of writing layers of fractions correct now here this gets cross multiplied so we get we could take 60 also common, right? So let me write 60 over h common, right? Now 3 plus 2 is 5, so I'll write 5 minus, and here we get 5 plus h. And the denominator is product of these two, which is 5 times 5 plus h. Correct? So now we can simplify this. Now this h and that h cancel because we get 60 minus because this is negative. When you open 5 minus 5 is 0 minus h over 5 times here we have h times 5. h times 5 times 5 plus h. Correct? Now as you can see this h and this h cancels. And we know h is very small. So it's kind of approaching 0. Right? So h very small means approaching 0. So if I approach 0, if this is approaching 0, I could write this as minus 60 over 5 times 5. That is 25. Correct? That is what I mean. 5 times 5. Now this could be simplified. So we, we can now write this as well 5 goes 12 times. So we get the same answer. Minus 12 over 5. Right? So we get the same answer, which is minus 12 over 5 um, temperature in degrees Celsius over kilometers. Does make sense to you, right? So that is how we can do it. So we don't really have to write a value like 0 0.01 or 0 0.001. Perfect. Now let's take the second example, which we'll do with difference quotient. Here is a very important question based on rate of change. Question number two. A speeding driver trying to drive along a road modeled by the curve f of x equals to 3 over 2x minus 1 leaves the road at a point x equals to 1 traveling in a straight line in the direction of the tangent. Will the driver hit a tree located at the point 2 minus 3? Now here on a curved path, if you leave, you go along the tangent line. So we need to find slope of tangent line, right? So we need to find slope of tangent at x equals to 1. Now that really means we need to find instantaneous rate of change at x equals to 1, correct? So we'll apply the difference quotient method to find instantaneous rate of change at x equals to 1. So uh, we could write this as instantaneous rate of change will be 
kind of slope for us will be uh, 3 over a point slightly away from 1 we will say 1 plus h so we will write 2 over 1 plus h minus 1 minus 3 over 2 times 1 minus 1 now how do we get this formula let me rewrite the formula right so this instantaneous rate of change will be uh, f of a plus h minus f of a over h okay now we are assuming that h is very small so we also write that in terms of limits limit h approaches zero so this term is normally used in calculus but we'll kind of introduce it here since uh, the whole idea here is to get and understand calculus also so we'll say limit h approaching zero and the same formula so if a plus h will be replace x with our a is one okay so we replaced with one plus h it does make sense to you right so all this divided by h so this is the top part divided by h it does make sense Good. so now we will write this as slope n equals to limit h approaches zero now if you find this term difficult you could say well when h is very very small as compared to one approaching zero that's the whole idea okay so uh, that gives you let's simplify this portion it is 3 over now 2 minus 1 is 1 so we get 1 plus 2h here we get minus 3 over 2 minus 1 is 1 and what we have here is so instead of writing layers we'll write 1 over h we can take 3 common so we can write this as limit h approaches 0 so we can take 3 over h common right and here we get uh, 1 minus just cross multiply 1 plus 2 h over this times this which is 1 plus 2 h perfect so this could be simplified and written as limit h approaches 0 3 over h 1 minus 1 is 0 you get minus 2 h in the numerator and 1 plus 2 h in the denominator perfect now let's take these terms to the right side and we can actually cancel h correct we can cancel this multiply 3 by minus 2 we get uh, minus 6 so we can write slope m which is instantaneous rate of change as as limit h approaches 0 minus 6 over uh, 1 plus 2 h now since h is very small I could write this as minus 6 so we always use the term estimate because approximated right so slope is minus 6 so what is the equation of line equation line is y equals to mx plus b and the point p for us is when x is 1 we calculate the value as 3 right so if it is 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so we get 3 so let's use slope of minus 6 here 1 and 3 3 for y slope of minus 6 times 1 plus b bringing it we get 9 equals to b so so we get equation of line as what so we get equation of line as y equals to slope of minus 6 x plus 9 so that becomes the equation of our tangent line right so this is equation of tangent line perfect now we need to check whether it passes through this point or not so let's substitute 2 so if I substitute 2 what do I get y equals to minus 6 times 2 plus 9 is indeed equals to minus 12 plus 9 as minus 3 
So y is minus 3, right? Therefore, therefore, he will, the driver will, I should write, hit the tree. Got it? Since we have shown that on the tangent line at x equals to 2, the y value is indeed minus 3. Is that clear, right? So I'd like you to go through this solution once again. It's a very popular test question. Now let's look into question number 3, which is determine an interval where average rate of change is equal to instantaneous rate of change at y intercept of the graph of reciprocal of 1 minus x whole square. So let's understand the function. So, so first is reciprocal of 1 minus x whole square. That means uh, y equals to 1 over 1 minus x whole square. Do you understand? So that is the function for us. Now the question is, determine the interval where average rate of change is equal to instantaneous rate of change at y-intercept. So y-intercept is when x is 0, right? So when we say y-intercept, that means x equals to 0. So we get y equals to 1 over 1 minus 0 whole square, which is at 1. So, so the y-intercept is... is the point zero 0,1. Correct. So we basically now want to find the instantaneous rate of change at this point. That's the whole idea, right? So what you could do here is that uh, there are a couple of ways to do it. One, we could actually also sketch this graph, 1 minus x whole square. How will it look like? Let's try to think about it. So when I say 1 minus x, that means at x equals to 1, denominator is 0, right? So at x equals to 1, denominator is 0, so it will be a vertical asymptote at x equals to 1. This is always positive, and uh, we have already found that uh, when it is 0, it is 1, correct? So if you plot, it will be kind of like this it is like 1 over x square graph shifted one unit to the right. Does it make sense to you, right? So from your knowledge of uh, rational functions, that should be the graph of the function, right? Now we are saying that the slope at 1 will be, let's say something like this at this point. Now we want instantaneous rate of change to be same. So that means draw a parallel line. So if you draw a parallel line on a graph, you will get your points. You get the idea, right? So you will get your points A and B. So that is how you could easily do it. So method one, is using graph. So what we do using graph is draw a parallel line. To tangent at x equals to 1 as we have shown, right? So basically what you get here is these two parallel lines and then these two points are your answer right so that is one way of doing it i like you to actually answer this question the second one is that since we are doing the squeezing method so this is valued one now at zero it is one so what we could do is that we could take two points same distance away small same distance away so if i take a point which is let us say minus half and half I should actually get two points which will give me the same secant right so so we also use method B which is 
squeezing. So we could take points where x is now in between minus half and plus half. So that could give you another solution. And you will notice that both these are good enough because this is an estimate, right? And so that gives you an idea. But do not take any point across one since you cannot cross the vertical asymptote. You get the idea, right? So this is sometimes asked in multiple choice question. And that is how you could do it even without finding the slope at the point x equals to zero. I hope that makes sense, correct? Now I think you're ready. I'd like you to give you some test questions uh, based on rate of change. Question number four I've just introduced here is basically your test. So it's a small, I should say, a quiz. Estimate slope of tangent at x equals to 2 for the following functions. We have three different functions. I'd like you to pause the video, answer, and then look into my suggestions. Okay. Now, first one. What do you expect? Now, clearly here, at 2, x equals to 2 is a vertical asymptote. Correct? It is 0, right? is a vertical asymptote. And therefore, slope is slope of tangent is what? It does not exist you need continuous part of the graph, correct? Now in the second case, if you sketch this, 1 over x minus 2 whole square plus 1, it is never 0, right? So if you sketch this graph, it will look like what? Well, this graph is going to look like, so at, uh, at 2, it will have a peak, the maximum value. So if I substitute 2 here, it will be 1. So this point will be at 1. What do you notice? Slope of tangent line at this point. Well, it is going to be horizontal, correct? So as you can see here, instantaneous rate of change is 0. So we get a horizontal tangent. Does it make sense to you, right? Last one here, C, I could factor and I could write this as y equals to x minus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now that could be written as 1 over x plus 2 where x is not equal to 2, right? Because they cancel. If they cancel, it means we have a hole at 2, right? So we have a hole at x equals to 2. So therefore, again, tangent does not exist, right? So in short, we'll be using does not exist, DNA. So I hope that makes sense. So these are good examples to understand that there are points where the tangent may not exist since they are not in the domain of the function or the tangent is undefined, right? And wherever you find slope to be zero, that could be a maximum or a minimum. So I hope that makes sense, right? Now feel free to write your comments and share your views. If you really like and subscribe to my videos, that will be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.